And Hane is here, even before me. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Hane. Glad to see you. So yes. uh, we will, we will start. But I will not start until I say a little uh, things about you. It's um, uh, we have here with us our uh, first keynote speaker. Uh, it's Hannah Lorebog from uh, from Colonia Public Library, and she has this good habit of making. Uh, um, library is great again and again. So Colonia Public Library is not her, her uh, first uh, library to, to become uh, uh, really exceptional. So she is um, she is here uh, to uh, inspire us. And uh, Hane also has a PhD in uh, cultural management. And she received numerous awards, including uh, in 2019, she received from uh, um, the Colonia Cultural Award for Cultural Manager of the Year. Yes, I have to read it because I don't want to mess up with that. But most of it, I, I just have to tell you that she's kind, she's encouraging. My first meeting with her, I will not never forget that she actually gave me a lot of courage when I was such a uh, small uh, library, uh, you know, mouse. And uh, she's incredibly smart and she's, here so honey you have the stage good luck <laughs> okay <laughs> um, a very warm welcome to everybody from cologne and congratulations to the occupy library organizing team who managed to put the conference online it's really pity that we could not meet personally but i thought on the good opportunity uh, to um, meet, to keep in touch, and uh, to uh, share experience uh, in a different way. And for me, it's the very first time uh, to uh, keynote speech uh, on hop in. So hopefully, everything will work fine. Uh, let me start with some pictures from Cologne. Just to give you an impression, Cologne is the fourth biggest city in Germany. And whenever you ask a person, what do you think when you hear Cologne? About 95% of the people say it's a cathedral. But uh, yes, uh, the Eau de Cologne uh, comes uh, uh, also uh, originally from our city. And uh, Carnival is a huge event every year and a symbol for the open-mindedness of the inhabitants, which is important for our work. And Cologne, with its 1.1 million inhabitants, has uh, people coming from 180 nations. This is another thing which influences our daily work. Our library is funded by the municipality of Cologne, and it's the most visited cultural and educational institution in town. Uh, it has more visitors than all museums in Cologne together, and it has more visitors than the Cologne football team. So these are good, ar good arguments uh, when I deal with politicians. Um, we have a central library and 11 smaller branches, a bus, and the small libraries, the so-called mini-bibs. The mini-bib is a symbol for what we are doing. We are reaching out where the people are. Our mini-bibs are grassroots libraries. They are in the middle of the quarter, close to a shopping mall, in a park, or here in a low income area. They are providing first contact with the library and you do not need a library card to take out items. It's by trust. Therefore, the collection there consists mostly of donations and they are run by trained volunteers and uh, are offering assistance, homework help and small events. So they are promoting the real library um, visits. 
the role of the libraries in our city is not just limited to lending books. Libraries are places for social exchange, equal opportunities. And the American library scientist David Lankes expresses it like that. Bad libraries build collections, good libraries build services, and great libraries, they build communities. So here you see another example how we are trying to reach out uh, with our maker bike. Uh, which is usually part of the furniture in our branch library in Köln Kalk. You will see more pics later. But uh, also all the digital platforms are a way to reach out uh, by offering databases, e-learning, media downloads. And uh, our experience during the lockdown was that uh, we got new and more customers, uh, even when the library was closed. So our proactive work uh, worked very well. Looking on the role of the libraries, many areas of societies are in state uh, of upheaval. This applies to libraries as well. And uh, on the facade of the the Academy of Fine Arts in Rotterdam, neon letters spell out the words of the painter Willem de Koning, I have to change to stay the same. And I think this applies very well to the current situation of libraries and other institutions worldwide. They must reinvent themselves without losing their principles and their social mission. The classic task of libraries is to offer education and knowledge. Nothing has changed in this respect. However, we must question how we fulfill this mission under changed conditions. For us, it's not only a matter of adapting the existing range of services, but also of a visionary rethinking of the whole library work. So we looked on new roles for libraries. And uh, when we were redesigning our <clears throat> library role, we took the Danish four space model. It's not just a model for analyzing, but it also contains a vision for the library that consists of four overlapping different spaces. The place to meet, the performative space, the learning space, and the inspiration space. According to the model, the library's overall objectives are cognition and information, engagement and empowerment, and innovation. The action resulting in this is create, participate, discover, and experience. I think the learning space is quite clear, but learning in the library happens nowadays uh, also through play, artistic activities, courses, and many other activities, not only by books. Uh, the performative space gives access to tools, but also uh, people can get support from their for their creative activities. So there are workshops, etc. A friend of mine, uh, the former director of the Doc One in Aarhus, Rolf Hapel, uh, was a professor at the University uh, of Washington. And he developed with his students the Library 2030, the future roles of the library and the librarian. Um, here you can see eight scenarios for our future work, uh, like the an inno innovation hub, a fact-based trust builder, social equity activist, a sense maker, privacy protector, community, memory bank, 
a sanctuary, what does this mean? Or a civic lab? For example, the san sanctuary is uh, more a traditional place uh, where uh, uh, people find, can find uh, a quiet room in their hectic work situations. Maybe they come for a, a break uh, in the uh, lun at lunchtime or so on. And the role of the librarian is uh, in uh, each scenario, it's different. Um, for example, uh, in the sanctuary uh, role, the librarian can be a storyteller, a propagandist for the virtues of reading, a facilitator of book clubs, etc. So we don't have to fulfill all the roles and all the scenarios, but uh, it's uh, like a toolbox for us. We look on trends every year and um, we look, for example, on the top technology trends of Gartner, the IFLA trend report, ALA trends. But there are also various studies on media use, consumer habits, media habits, etc. And I picked out the top trends for libraries 2020. Um, you see democratization of knowledge and technology, podcasts and audiobooks, a meaningful connection and a peer-to-peer -peer consultation, artificial intelligence, a big topic all over, augmented and virtual reality, a topic for many years and connected with learning, physical and digital spaces continue to merge and smart home, smart city. These are buzzwords in many communities and we try uh, to find a solution what, which content the libraries can provide. So we started some years ago with a makerspace and uh, for us a makerspace is now more than a room. It uh, shows the changing role of the library from a knowledge archive to implementation area and working with the people more than with the collection. But it means a changing role of the user as well from consumer to producer. So the working with people is our most important task. And by this way, we've uh, defined our motto, explore, create, and share. Sharing knowledge is very important for us. And not only we as librarians do it, but uh, we try to get people uh, to do it by themselves. We try to involve the community. And um, this motto applies not only to the users, but also in long term to our entire library staff, including the management. Tinker and try. We encourage customers and team to tinker and try, uh, which means learning and having fun. Here I show you some samples of our makerspace program, the makerspace as a space in this way. When we started it, we reached out and asked uh, pupils uh, at, from a nearby school uh, if they could uh, provide uh, digital content or workshops uh, uh, for uh, adults and we called them the junior experts and this was the way how we started uh, programming because we didn't have money to hire experts and uh, when we were the first workshops were running more people came adults then and asked if they could uh, give a workshop as well and so we developed a huge program here you can see some pictures. So the fair haired lady is a pupil and the little guy is her teacher. 
and it was really great thing to see how this uh, developed. Um, for many people, maker space it's a technology space, but uh, knitting groups and sewing machines are a form of making as well. And uh, sewing machines were very helpful when Corona crisis started. So uh, my colleagues uh, could produce our uh, own masks and uh, we could provide uh, machines uh, to the public. That's one thing we, we buy things which are very expensive or uh, which you don't need so often and uh, offer them to the public. So it's from the piano to the sewing machine uh, to uh, music instruments um, and um, that's one thing uh, we, we want to do to democratize uh, the access. So you can see the changing role. It's also an input from Ralph Harpel. You see, from informing to involving, from giving access to information to facilitating exchange and sharing, uh, from alienation to politics to civic engagement, consumers of democracy become active participants, eroding social capital uh, comes uh, to building social coherence their problem, no, it's our problem, expert domain, public domain, concerns, opportunities. So we defined our task for the future. Social participation and digitization are key issues for us. We actively react to social developments proactively and become part of the discussion. So I will show you some samples what we are uh, doing. Uh, starting uh, with the topic fake news, um, where we have difficult, different uh, formats. Um, but uh, when Corona crisis started, we uh, offered and uh, developed new tools like online tutorials for new members. I told you we got a lot of new members. Uh, we had reading events all over Cologne, a fairy tale comic action week uh, online. We had spe spe special activities for deaf people, uh, uh, fairy tale Mother Holle in sign languages, which was very popular. STEM experiments on YouTube, little tiny experiments, easy to do at home, maker kits, webinars, coding with scratch, example here, here an example for a virtual library rally uh, done by an app. We, most of the things uh, we didn't do before uh, on uh, digital uh, channels, we did it in real life and um, the crisis gave us the chance to uh, develop new formats. Very popular, the book and media review service of our colleagues and I think my colleagues like uh, to do this as well. Um, we used streaming tools for the first time. We had a Facebook live stream, a discussion with the digital expert of one of the biggest and most famous German newspapers on fake news about Corona on the internet and had more than a thousand uh, visitors. Um, we tried to reach out to collaborate with uh, journalists, with newspapers, with radio channels, with TV channels. We invite journalists for a moderated talk. We try to build a network of journalists willing to uh, assist uh, in informing uh, young people, but also adults about uh, their work and about uh, fake news and real news. 
and I, hi I highly can recommend uh, uh, to reach out and ask uh, if you find people are, who are willing to do this. We did a fake hunter simulation game with uh, students, with pupils. Uh, you see the eighth grade. And they were, uh, there were three phases, a first meeting, a kickoff um, with a storyline. We trained them to be fake hunters, what's important. Then they went home and they did independent learning and um, researched on own devices. And in the second meeting uh, in our, uh, on our premises, they presented the, uh, the results and sure, it, they got an award and a certificate. So um, how to find fake news? This is a poster from IFLA. You can find it in different uh, languages. And uh, what I found interesting in the workshops with journalists was that fake news is spread six times faster on Twitter than true events. So what does this mean? Um, you saw in the top trends that podcasts are a big uh, trend topic. So we will open a YouTube studio on a do-it-yourself basis where people can uh, use the equipment and um, we will give lessons how to use it and um, you can do it uh, well you can spend little money or you can spend a lot of money but you can do a start on a small scale as well so you uh, only need a room a space and some tools and it depends on your uh, possibilities on which scale you offer it. Another uh, relevant topic for us um, is climate and uh, environment. We have a library of things where people can lend out, out sense boxes. You see them here, the green ones, to measure climate data. We do upcycling uh, workshops, uh, upcycling trash, a water school. Uh, make your own household cleaners is a very popular workshop. Repair cafe, which means uh, to uh, get old stuff repaired. And it's kind of a knowledge exchange. <clears throat> and a lot of other things, only some samples here. So uh, STEM uh, or STEAM is a very important topic for us because kids don't like it so much uh, and it's not very popular, the STEM topics at school. So we started with the STEM festival. Uh, now there are around 120 events and we have no extra staff to do this, but we hire people uh, to do it for us. and. Uh, we started uh, getting extra money from our community. We started small and uh, got bigger. So uh, they saw how well it works. And uh, now our uh, mayor is sponsor and mentor of uh, the festival. This year we have the topic Our Earth. You see some posters, um, we get sponsors to put them on huge screen all screens all over the city. And here as well, take it apart, look what's inside and repair it and upcycle, but also having fun but with uh, Makey Makey uh, playing music on bananas. This, you see here the little electrodes. It's very cheap and very easy to handle. Everybody of you can do it. Um, I talked about the library of things. These are about 120 STEM items you can borrow out. Uh, in German, STEM means mint, so you see the color. And um, 
it's from the planetarium to telescope to microscope and a lot of uh, playful uh, uh, tools and uh, this library of things you can see you can also borrow out uh, instruments or ebook readers and the ma many other stuff uh, vr glasses um, we always combine this with uh, programs. So we have the STEM story time for the little ones um, reading a book and doing a small experiment afterwards. And we uh, last year we did a, a STEM story uh, time uh, with the Dotless uh, STEM for babies. And this was really fun. Uh, if you need any advice or help, please send an email and we can help uh, you with anything in this presentation. Um, to give people access, uh, uh, we started reading with docs. They are our volunteers. We have three docs in the meantime, and it's uh, small uh, groups, uh, but it's uh, a really important and relevant uh, topic especially for children who are shy or autistic. We had some special lectures with blind uh, re uh, readers uh, reading to children. And this is a really impressive event. So all this innovation made transformation necessary and uh, innovation and should aim at transforming community lives. And we ask, what are the requirements in our local society? Which business areas, industry and other fields could be interesting to get inspiration? Looking out of the box, who could be our potential partners? Partners, partners you never think uh, in. And uh, we try to involve citizens and our users. The first question is, why are we doing this? And the why is uh, the question for the design thinking process as well. You always start with why and which impact do we want to get? So, we uh, use uh, several methods to involve the community. This are surveys, focus groups, external analysis, um, design thinking, very important for us now, thanks to Aarhus and Chicago, photo diary, mystery shopping, complaint management, collaboration with unusual partners, just trying out things, use social media responses, and a lot more. So design thinking, um, we developed a whole model library, which is very famous now, the cult library. It was on the German uh, television uh, news. Um, completely with the design thinking process, which is inspiration, ideation, and iteration. So how do we get inspiration? We talk to people and uh, ask them, we expand our horizon by observing uh, the target groups or we look for other places where we can learn, like cafes, museum, co-working co spaces. I'm always on work when I go someplace and look uh, uh, with uh, innovators' eyes. But the ground rules are have fun, encourage wild ideas, bring ideas to life, work fast, work together, and no not be perfect. That's very hard for us librarians, I know. So collecting ideas and prioritizing ideas, you know, the brainstorming rules, like uh, criticism has to be uh, restored and the crazy ideas and so on. After this process, we priority, prioritize what are we going to do next? 
and uh, after that we uh, bring uh, our ideas to life and do the prototyping. You have different methods to do prototyping. You can build a model or you can do role games or you can build a modified room. You see here uh, different uh, models built with uh, very simple things uh, like uh, paper and you uh, see here we do uh, small models by uh, building this lego and uh, this little lego models we show other people this means we are testing the ideas and um, we are uh, asking for input and uh, then we prioritize the results and uh, redo uh, the core idea and uh, you see now the library, uh, this uh, third place library uh, in Kalk, uh, uh, the living room in uh, the quarter. Um, we don't plan uh, like this. We are just do, uh, doing a makeover of the central library, planning this, and uh, not only shelves. You see here uh, the result of the workshop uh, after five days in Kalk, and you see the real library looking like that. You see uh, the workshop picture, uh, which uh, also shows transparency between inside and outside. And you see the result with the trees in the library. They're fake trees, but were more expensive than the real trees. Um, you see that the reference counter is a common table, not and has a non-bureaucratic experience appearance. Sorry, um, here you can see how it looks uh, like in uh, reality. Um, so we create thematic spaces and uh, quality of stay is very important for us. Eye catchers, uh, community place, a meeting room and uh, a, ro a space for having fun or make a space. So this brings me to uh, my last topic, the change. Change is normal and uh, the Willingness is a prerequisite for innovation. You see here um, four uh, models uh, uh, how to uh, um, how people are accepting uh, changes. You see the promoters, five percent like me, they say, "Oh yes, let's do it." You see forty percent skeptics. Uh, um, they are very important because they uh, dictate deeper and look on problems. So you start with them and um, they uh, find uh, uh, problems you can think about before you present it to, to the rest of the staff. And uh, so the undetermined, they uh, can be persuaded if uh, their questions are answered. And there are always opponents who don't like it forget them, just start uh, with your change. And um, you can see here the steps of the change process. Um, they are normal, so it's good to know. You're shocked when you have to change and you have to do diff things differently. differently and uh, you can see very interesting, the rational insight is before the emotional acceptance. So you see, uh, well, our brains, they understand, but until you have to get the hearts of the people to, to, uh, to really do a change. And in the end, uh, you're learning and you're integrated in your work. So only with the people uh, you can do the changes. The staff competencies, our 21st century skills, they are learning skills like critical thinking, creativity, collaboration, liter literacy skills like 
communication, information literacy, media literacy, technology literacy, and very important, the life skills, flexibility, leadership, initiative, productivity, and social skills. How to foster transformative say, change? Think beyond your library, know your community, share what you know, be part of the solution. You are not alone, not at all. Uh, our change process in Cologne uh, started like that. We hardly had any additional budget and any additional staff. We try to find project funds. We looked for sponsoring. We relocated our existing funds. We looked for new crazy co uh, corporations uh, for civic engagement and volunteers like the junior experts I, men I mentioned. We outsourced and we did a lot of staff development and we hired new staff with new profiles in the library, but we could only do this step by step. Uh, when uh, people left, we could hire new ones. We uh, created special team structures, the competency uh, teams. They are cross hierarchical teams. We have a maker team, a VR team, a social media team, a YouTube team, a weblog team, and so on and a gaming team, uh, they uh, are, uh, well, this can be the library assistant or be the uh, director. They do the idea development, six to eight people, and they are responsible. They get little budgets and they can buy things or do programs. Here, uh, mistakes are allowed and they, no, they can trust me uh, that I don't blame them if uh, something doesn't work well. So they can do in-house training for our other staff members. And uh, the, they know they change the image of the library in the public. Our rules for change. Be like kids. Don't mind to present unfinished things or raw ideas. Not every experiment will work or get perfect. Just try out things and play around. Don't talk of a culture of making mistakes, but of a learning culture. Answer yes and, and not yes but. Failure is part of the learning process. Have the courage to be a first mover and the courage to make mistakes. Don't be a perfectionist. Have the courage to make temporary efforts, to try out things. Innovative offers do not have to take the form of a permanent service. Start small. Look for quick wins. Be courageous. Look for partners and collaborate. Our motto is when others start to plan, we have already fixed the first mistakes. And that's my favorite, Nelson Mandela. It always seems impossible until it's done. Thank you so much for your attendance. But, but don't leave, stay with us because we still have Hannah with, with us for, for questions. And it was such an inspiring uh, presentation as always, I would say. Honey, you always do this to me and I know that you always uh, do this to other people listening to you because we receive so great uh, feedback in the chat area. So people, please don't be shy, ask away. And I'm also going to answer some of the technical uh, um, organizing uh, questions because this is the first uh, serious session. So we expected that. Yet we will try to make uh, uh, recordings available pending uh, uh, you know, agreements from our speakers, but uh, we expect most of our speakers to let us do that. So we will do that well for registered participants. So, but after the conference, not now. So coming back to 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 the questions here, uh, Hane and uh, the common comments. Um, as you might uh, expect, there's several uh, questions related to money. Uh, 
it's always this. I couldn't uh, imagine that librarians are so preoccupied with budgets. So we have uh, Liz asking uh, if um, with COVID you had um, you, you had any impact on your budget. And the related question comes also from, uh, from Didar. Um, how do you convince the local, uh, your all local authorities to support your programs financially? So. Well, um, as I said, start, we start uh, small um, and we try to relocate own budget or have crazy ideas. So it's easier to find uh, funding for, for new and unusual ideas uh, by companies, but also by public funding. And we always try to start on a smaller scale and then we present uh, the result and the result, sorry to say, but it's mostly good. So uh, we have to we have to show something when we ask for money uh, uh, and not just reaching out and say, we want to do this and that and please give us money for that. But uh, we, we have a little sample we can show. So it's more uh, uh, visible what we want. And uh, so we, we could uh, finally get an extra budget for uh, the STEM festival or um, we, we uh, uh, learned, uh, our staff members learned that we get more uh, attention when we do unusual things like all the things I showed you. Uh, to uh, uh, get our funding for the whole uh, library uh, 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 secure because uh, they know we are a relevant uh, institution so uh, they don't cut the budget so easy. That was our experience. And we didn't have any branch closed since we are working that way. And before there were a lot of branches. Okay, so that's, that's the way to do it. Be good and then you have the money. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, as I said, it's it's easier to get something if you present something uh, than just reaching out. Uh, I want, I want. Well, you cannot always do this, but um, in some ways, it it worked. It worked for us. And let me add: if you have any questions, um, please send emails. We I will sh send you samples and so on. Uh, very often the questions yes. come later. So from uh, from Noah uh, John, um, did you get engagement from the mayor? How did you get engagement from the from the mayor? Uh, did you have a previous relationship before the Steam connection, or uh, was this the first connection? And how did you approach him? I think this is interesting. Very interesting for many people here. Advocacy part. Well, uh, yeah, um, I I uh, sent my ideas and uh, we made a program and we sent the program and it looked very nicely. So uh, I sent it to her personal assistant, who I know, and. Uh, so uh, I, I can always uh, be very uh, uh, insistent. So I called again and uh, uh, when I met her uh, someplace, I, I went uh, to her and talked with her and uh, presented. And uh, so it's a lot of uh, personal interaction uh, as well. And, uh, trying to know the right people and then uh, to know who to whom to talk when you need uh, a special Thank you for, for uh, the answer. And a uh, um, question, a very interesting question. <laughs> and I, I, I just let me add, uh, uh, as I said, we are looking on trends and we are looking on society. And I looked uh, well, was, what was in the program of our mayor? What was in the program uh, for the future of the city of Cologne? And so we are relevant for them because we have the same topics like they have social inclusion, digitization and so on. So we are a tool for them as well. So I think it's very important to look uh, what are uh, the, the guidelines and the, the goals of your community. 
and it does not uh, depend on a party. It's not uh, political party work. It's just uh, uh, the the uh, guidelines. Of, yes, of and the how do you community. handle internal resistance against change in the design thinking process? Well, that's a tough one. <laughs> So how, how do you handle yeah. this from, from your staff uh, yeah. when they don't want the change? Well, I, as, I, as I explained, I look for the five person. I know my five person uh, uh, who are eager to do any change. And uh, in the first run, I talk with them. If they say, oh, forget this, it's too much or it's uh, too crazy. So then I don't follow, mostly I don't follow the idea anymore. Uh, but when they say, oh, yeah, let's try try out, then we look for the 40% of the skeptics and we, we talk with them and we, uh, we uh, see problems I don't see because I'm so enthusiastic. And so uh, we uh, uh, work proactive uh, to, to solve the problems or the, the questions which could come uh, when I present it to the whole team. And so we have already answers and uh, we, we started, for example, with, uh, with uh, uh, gaming or with virtual reality in the central library. And if I would have gone and said to the branches, you have to do this, they wouldn't have done. But then we invited them to let them try out things, to play around, to do the games, to use the VR glasses. And uh, they saw how successful it worked. Now they want it. They are asking so, for it now. So you have to be patient, very patient, which is not my uh, uh, big thing. But, so uh, thank I you so much, that. Hannah, for this. We have uh, some questions that were not answered. Uh, and uh, you were kind enough to invite people to actually write to you directly. So be bold, guys and girls. Go for her. You can actually uh, send your messages uh, as a private message to Hane. And she, if she, she has the time and the pleasure, she will uh, uh, possibly answer uh, your questions. And uh, we have to move on with the schedule we, we started. So don't forget to explore all the places. Uh, go to sessions, see what you find there. So thank you so much, Hane. You were the first one to, to, to be on the stage. I'm so <laughs> happy with it. Was, it was a pleasure. Yes. And I can only say, have fun. <laughs>